Hey everyone, for today's FAFSA and financial aid prep video series tip, I wanna to talk to you about filling out the FAFSA if you're divorced or separated. October 1st is almost here, and if you will be filling out a FAFSA for the 23-24 year, then you need to know this information, especially if you're currently divorced or separated. I see so many families and students make a mistake on the FAFSA when it comes to this, which can literally cost you thousands of dollars. So if you are the parents of a dependent student required to put your information on the FAFSA and you are currently divorced or separated, then only one parent needs to provide their information on the form. This would be the parent with whom the child resided with most within this last year. Now, if it's a 50-50 split down the middle, then it would be the parent who provided more than half of the child's support within the last year. Now, on that same note, if you are remarried and you are the parent that's going to be filling out the FAFSA on behalf of your child, then you do need to report your current spouse's income and asset information on the FAFSA, even though this parent may be, just be the step parent to the child. Bummer, I know, especially if this parent is not helping contribute towards the child's education or anything, but it's a federal, re excuse me, a federal regulation and something that you need to do. Now for independent students, if you're divorced or separated, the same goes for you. You only need to provide your income and asset information on the FAFSA form and not your current spouses or your ex-spouses. Now, what's really important to remember about this, if you are divorced or separated, um, and separated, you actually need to be living in different households in order to only report one parent's income. I come up, I, or one spouse's or one parent's income. I come across a lot of families who are currently separated but living in the same household and sharing expenses and things like that. If that applies to you, then both parents or both the student and the spouse need to put their income and asset information on the FAFSA. You have to be living in separate households in order for only one of you to report your information. Now, the other piece of important advice I want to give you, if you are currently divorced or separated, and for the year 2021, you filed a joint tax return, it's very important when you fill out the FAFSA that you do not use the IRS data retrieval tool and import your 2021 taxes. Why, you ask? Because it's going to import the joint tax return that you filled out with your spouse. And remember, when you're divorced or separated, you only need to report one parent's income or assets or just you, the student, your income and assets if you're independent. So if you file the joint tax return, when you fill out the FAFSA electronically, it's going to come to the tax section and ask you if you would like to link to the IRS data retrieval tool or enter your income manually. You want to choose enter your income manually and make sure that you input just your income and asset information on the FAFSA and you're not import, excuse me, importing the joint tax return in. I see so many families make mistakes on this and it can literally cost you thousands of dollars. If you have a combined income of let's say 120 or $130,000, but on your own, you know, it's much less than that. It can make a really big difference in a positive way when it comes to financial aid. So that's my tip for today. If you're divorced or separated, very important. If you have any questions about that, be sure to comment below. And I just wanted to remind all of you parents of high school seniors, it's not too late to join my FAFSA and Financial Aid Academy that started September 1st. I know that all your students are super busy and, and applying for admission and you're kind of focused on that. But filling out the FAFSA and CSS profile and going through the financial aid process is something you need to be doing at the same time that they're doing all this, especially if your student is applying early action or early decision. In order to get those financial aid offers early in December, you need to get all this financial aid paperwork done as soon as it opens up in October. So check it out. It's on my website. There's also a link above. It's called the FAFSA and Financial Aid Academy. It's a group coaching program that takes you month by month, step by step, through the overwhelming financial aid process, there's a monthly task list to help you stay on track. I upload scholarship resources each and every month to save students the time searching for them so they can simply log in and apply for them. I host live monthly webinars. And then depending on the level you sign up for, you get access to a private Facebook group where you can ask unlimited questions, an exclusive email where you, where you can email me and my team questions, and we will answer them at any time throughout the entire senior year. And then my highest level of service also includes a couple of one-on-one -on -one Zoom consultations 
that you can get assistance with anything you need financial aid related. So highly encourage you to check it out. I have a ton of families that sign up this time of year as they begin navigating the overwhelming financial aid process and searching for information and answers. It's a wonderful program, my favorite program to facilitate and will give you a ton of value. So I hope that helps. Uh, if you're divorced or separated, be sure to share this video with others. If you know other people that are divorced or separated so they don't make this common mistake on the FAFSA that can cost them thousands of dollars. Thanks so much for watching everybody.